whilst I was doing this challenge, I, th I found it was easier to have overtaken or about to overtake the first car by the time we got to the first corner, as you can see here. The positive about this challenge is you can just break a lot later than the AI in order to get closer and perform overtakes. I found that this corner and this braking zone was the final place to overtake this car, otherwise they would beat you to the line. For this challenge I chose the M6 GT3 car. I also went and purchased the high RPM turbocharger in addition to the racing heavy wet tyres. You can probably get away with the intermediates but I chose the full wets. Make sure to change your tyres to racing hards before you start. At the start of this race you're just going to go about it like you would any other race. Similar to Sabuka, around lap 3 it's going to start to get dark and rainy. So at this point you might need to begin to alter your driving style just a little bit. I made the decision at the end of lap 4 to box for wet tyres. Obviously depending on how much fuel you have left and the weather, you might want to stay out or you might want to box a little bit earlier. As you can see now the track is starting to get really wet and there's no clear visible racing line. Obviously it's your call whether you feel intermediates or wets are the best tyres for these conditions but as you can tell we are catching up to the AI in front which are really struggling on their dry tyres. As you can see the AI are now boxing and they're going on to intermediate tyres. Again this is personal preference whether you prefer to go on to the intermediates or the wets like I am. What I found was the best strategy was to avoid the dry racing line and go for the wet racing line instead. I found that I had more grip and was able to get a lot more speed to catch up to the front runners. We're now on to lap 8 and just over 9 minutes in and we've caught up to the front runner who is on intermediate tyres but as you can tell there's now a clear dry line on track and it will be soon time to switch over to dry tyres. This means that the AI that are around us on intermediate tyres will have an advantage for a short time until we box. So we're about halfway through lap 10 and as you can see the car in the third place has really crept up on us. Uh, which proves how slow we are going on these wet tyres. So now I think is a good time to change for hards.
now on a dry compound it's now really important for us to stay on the dry racing line as much as possible otherwise we are really going to struggle and because I didn't listen to my own advice just there we ended up picking up a three second slowdown penalty What I would advise that you do, that I didn't, is to stick your information screen, which mine currently has the fuel map on, I would keep that on the weather. And just so you're aware of when it does start to rain, because I wasn't aware that rain was coming again, and as you're about to witness, it turned into a very messy 45 seconds. With my lesson now learned, I'm now keeping it on the weather radar for the rest of the race, just to monitor and see what's going on. Again, we're sticking to the wetter racing line for better grip. Because we're sticking to the wetter racing line, we are able to overtake the car in first place. Although they are being held up by a back marker, we'll still take it anyway. As you can see from the weather radar, there is a huge patch of dry weather now coming in, meaning the track will dry out for the end of the race. We're now into the dry patch of weather, so now it's really important to stick to the wet line as much as possible just to preserve some of that speed and grip that we were talking about before. So on the end of lap 18, with about six and a half minutes to go, I decided to box for my final pit stop and put on some racing hard tyres, refuel and get ready to go until the end. As we're coming towards the end of the race, we've just done a 1 minute 11 and there is 1 minute 18 left in the race, so that means we've got a delta of about 7 seconds. So for the end of the race, I simply just backed off, slowed down a little bit, and as you can see, we've got about 5 seconds before the checkered flag is shown so we slow down wait till it's shown and then we finish the race so for the slipstream challenge obviously slipstream is vital in order to achieve the 248.5 miles an hour target when going for some overtakes just be mindful that some cars do pull out in front of you uh, especially i found the car that was in first place the lamborghini aventador it would just pull out and hog the middle of the road making it difficult to overtake
for the drag race. I think you know the drill by now. Pick the fastest car you've got. Mine's a super formula car. However, when it comes to actually doing this challenge, I did initially struggle with it because traction control is turned off by default. As you can see, got too much throttle and I just lose the back end of the car. So just be mindful with your throttle usage. The mileage challenge, this one isn't particularly difficult. With Nurbo Ring, there's a lot of downhill areas where you can just coast. Remember to put your fuel map in six, go in as high a gear as possible, and as little throttle usage as possible. I won't bore you with the finer details of the track because there aren't too many, so I'll just speed it up for you. As you can see, we're approaching the 5.52 mile challenge with about 40% fuel left. For this overtake challenge, there is a little bit of a learning curve to it. For example, I found that braking at about 100 meters was the way to go for the first corner. Whilst you're going round, just feather the throttle, avoid big bits of contact, otherwise you will fail. I found that if I hadn't overtaken the third place car by the time I'd finished the chicane, I wouldn't have been able to get gold in this challenge. stick around the outside of this corner and then I found that dive bombing was, was the way forward here. Again just feathering the throttle, letting off when I need to just to retain grip in order to complete the overtake. The one lap magic around Monza, I found that playing about 75% throttle off the start was the way to go in order to get maximise your speed. You're braking at the 150 metre mark, down into second gear, keep it as smooth as possible around the chicane, don't full throttle it until you're straight. I found that this Ferrari really didn't want to turn whilst I was accelerating so I had to let off and then begin steering to do to complete the overtake. We're braking at the 200 meter mark. It's 
Lower down into second gear, over the chicane. Wasn't very smooth, but we're okay. Coming into the Lesmos, we're going to take both of these in third gear. Approaching the chicane, we're breaking at the 200 meter board, down into second gear, up into third. Let off the throttle because it doesn't want to turn. When we're out of the corner, up to fourth. We're breaking at the 150 meter board, all the way down into second. Get around the corner and then cycle through the gears. For the drifting challenge, this for me was an absolute nightmare, but for the first sector, you're aiming to start your drift and then finish with around 2,500 points. Going into the second sector, you're going to slow down, swing it to the right, go down to second gear to try and maintain as much momentum as possible. And as you can see, I barely completed it, but I was so happy that I did. For earning bronze in all the missions, you will unlock a Viper Group 4 car. And for earning gold in all the missions, you will unlock a F-1500T.